everybody, I'm Judith Hannock. I'm a lazy quilter, and I'm here today to bring you my first block and my block of the month of 2015. I'm really excited because this is the first time I've ever done it online. Done it a few times in my classroom at my shop, but uh, this is a new adventure for me. So today, we're going to be doing this block. Basic star block, and we're going to learn how to do flying piece. Uh, next month, we'll be doing a half square triangle, so be sure to tune in for that. Anyway, if you want to follow along, it's three basic colors, light, medium, dark. If you want to buy my kits, they're available on my Etsy shop uh, online, which is linked below. You can buy this color wave, or you can buy the Batik color wave, which is really, really pretty. If you're, uh, if you're familiar with Batik, they're nice and bright and happy. So yeah, let's do our first block. And uh, if you like the video, <laughs> If you like my awkwardness online, please subscribe so you can see all my videos. And uh, yeah, so let's start. All right, block one, let's get to it. Here are your supplies, pens, marking pens, rotary cutter, and feet. That's a quarter inch in a straight stitch, a zigzag. And a sewing machine, which I'm using the Janome Skyline 5 today. All right, so we're gonna get started with the flying geese part of uh, this project. So you're going to take your three and a half inch squares uh, in this color wave, they're dark blue. And uh, in the petite color wave, they're also dark blue. I tried to match them a little bit. So these are three and a half by three and a half. And we are going to mark a line on the wrong side of the fabric, corner to corner. And I'm using a yellow pencil here. Yellow shows up the best for the camera. Also, I can see it. <laughs> you can use purple marker, but it gets a little tricky. So you just uh, take a ruler, any kind will do. You see I'm using a Kirby uh, log cabin. <laughs> it was the, the most I had, a, had a, in, in hand at the time. So you mark all eight. And I have a video of me marking light, but I sped it up so I wouldn't bore you guys to death. Um, you don't want to sit here and watch the same thing over and over. Although it's good. It really drives it home that uh, this is how you mark. Uh, so, okay. Now we're ready to put these together. Um, we're going to uh, take our squares and place them at one end of the rectangle. That's right sides together. And then we're gonna sew down that line. So, uh, we are ready to sew these flying geese and we're going to move on to the middle part which is also three and a half inch blocks and uh, two light colors and two medium colors uh, in this case it's orange and blue in the boutique it's also orange and blue see what I did there so I like to place these out to see how they're going to go um, I know it doesn't seem really important but when you're putting pieces together sometimes being as simple as you can get is is good because uh, you can keep track of yourself so i'm going to flip these right sides together and uh, line them up with our edges and stick a couple pins in them um, don't always need pins but pins signify which side you're supposed to sew on for one and uh, they can stop your fabric from shifting when you put it under the, uh, the sewing machine which can happen, even to the best of us. So uh, I try to make it a habit to pin as much as I can. Um, my mother never pins, but uh, I'm not quite to her standard yet. So we're gonna take these pieces over to the sewing machine and uh, sew everything together. Okay, so we're at our sewing machine and we're going to start with uh, sewing these flying geese which means we want an eight foot on or a straight stitch zigzag foot. Uh, Elna and Janome uh, and brother are called A. I'm not sure about the rest of them. I've put a leader fabric under because I found with these American made uh, cloth works that the, if you're not using a straight stitch needle plate, the fabric tends to get eaten a little bit. Uh, this uh, using a leader fabric is very helpful in that manner, uh, especially if you're using batiks as well. I found that batiks like to get eaten uh, and what happens is that uh, the fabric just has nothing to, the stitches have nothing to hold on to so the leader fabric helps. Stick the leader fabric down, put a couple stitches in, 
Now we're gonna start sewing on these flying geese. And I have to apologize, my commentary got deleted from here, so I'm having to <laughs> re-record it. What I'm telling you right now here with my fingers is you wanna start sewing on that middle section. If you start sewing on that corner, that corner tends to get eaten down into the fabric. So we're gonna line up and uh, put the line that we've drawn in the middle. Uh, it's that little valley right there in the foot as you can see there, which is what's nice about the A foot is you have that. And we're gonna sew a 1.8 stitch length. That's 1.8 stitch length or as close to that as you can get. We're gonna sew down each line from corner to corner. Now without taking the fabric out, we're gonna put our next piece in. This is called chain piecing. It's pretty common among quilters, especially if you're doing the same uh, sections over and over again. If you're doing an entire quilt of the same block, chain piecing is pretty important. So, and needle down. If you don't have a needle down function on your computerized machine, if you have mechanical, uh, just turn that hand wheel. Get used to turning that hand wheel so the needle's in the down position. So we're just gonna start in the middle and sew corner to corner. Remember, don't start at the that other corner, that's how fabric gets eaten. <laughs> so we have four of these to do. I like to make sure when I'm laying them down on the sewing machine to go through that they all look exactly the same. Uh, in other words, I'm putting the blue block on the same side of the beige block on all four pieces. So they all look identical. This helps you stay straight. <laughs> uh, at least it helps me stay straight and I, I, uh, I need that help. And uh, if you get a little bit off, no big deal. I can tell I'm a little bit off. <laughs> I'm also sewing with a camera in between me and the, the sewing machine, which is a little new to me. Uh, but if you get a little off, uh, don't worry about it. You can go back and fix it if you want, or if it's really not too bad, just keep on chugging. So this is the last one. And we're gonna sew straight. You can see I'm using a start stop button which if you guys haven't had the opportunity to use one or you have one and you don't use it, I highly recommend it. They're wonderful. Once you get used to it, you can't go back to a foot pedal. Okay, so we're going to um, do the middle sections, which means we're going to switch out our feet. Okay, we have our quarter inch foot on. I'm using one with a guide. That's that black guide at the side, which means I'm just gonna rest my uh, fabric against it and uh, if I'm in the right position, it should give me a quarter of an inch. You should test this, by the way, uh, ahead of time. So I put my leader fabric in and I'm gonna sew a quarter inch, 1.8 stitch length. Again, I always sew a uh, quilt with 1.8, so uh, keep using that. Only two little pieces here. Uh, so we're going to, uh, whoop, my camera fell. <laughs> I don't know, decided to fall at that moment, okay. So uh, chain piecing again, I just lift up, start sewing, start stop. Uh, taking your pins out, don't uh, don't run over your pins. You're not supposed to. Uh, I've been told it's, it's bad, although I do do it on occasion. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna trim these up. Uh, we, we, you gotta uh, cut off the excess. And here I'm gonna show you how to do it with a ruler. You can put your quarter inch mark uh, on the line that you've sewn and cut this really nice pristine uh, cut. So it's uh, perfect for those of you looking for everything to be cut and clean on the back. I get it. Uh, I don't do it all the time myself, but uh, I'm more than happy to show you. Uh, and I've got my big ruler out. I don't have that small one anymore. This is the creative grid and I really like using it because the quarter inch marks are in white and uh, are really easy to see. It's also got a uh, 16th and uh, eighth and 16th marks, which I like. So, so I've done this first few uh, two with a ruler and now I'm going to show you a little bit of sloppiness on my part. Um, usually I just cut my flying geese like this. <laughs> if you're comfortable with your rotary cutter, uh, go for it. You could also just use a straight pair of scissors, uh, which I did. Uh, I lose things constantly. I don't know where my scissors are right now. So I just use my rotary cutter and slice that off. Uh, as you can see right there, I'm using a quick draw rotary cutter. Beep. Beep.